Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson. This is, it's going to be an interactive Q&A that is all about pronunciation. So this is really a pronunciation lesson to help you improve your speaking skills so that you are speaking clearly, so that you are speaking accurately. And what I want to do is just take your questions, your questions, anything um, that you want to know if there is a word or a phrase that you may be a little unsure about the pronunciation, I wanna take those questions, you can write them in the chat, and you can hear my pronunciation, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. So today I really want you to be thinking about all of your pronunciation questions, any pronunciation questions that you may have. And I realize I've said pronunciation <laughs> quite a lot already. So the first thing that I wanna say is, well, happy Halloween. I hope whether you celebrate Halloween or you don't celebrate Halloween, I just hope you, I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. And I wanna give some quick hellos to um, Lolly, great to see you, Angela Sleepwalker, um, Skrith, Yingo, Ario, <laughs> Alex, what's up? Uh, glad you guys are here. Thank you for joining me. And what, the way we're going to begin, I'm, I, I'm going to begin with questions from our uh, members and our Patreon community because I posted there saying, hey, do you guys have any questions? Uh, pronunciation, let me know. And if you guys are interested in showing us some love you, and want to support and sponsor Interactive English, there are links down in the description if you want to get a YouTube membership, uh, Patreon, uh, it's down there in the description. So the first word uh, that I have from, from our uh, list of patrons um, is this right here. Somebody asked about uh, adapt and adopt. So this is a great example of a minimal pair. And I think when you're talking about pronunciation, minimal pairs, it's, it's excellent to understand what that is. It's when you have, you have two words and the only difference between those words is one sound. So right, right here, we have two words and the only difference is that vowel sound, that uh, a and the a, ah, all right? Adapt, adopt. That is the only difference, and that's what makes this a minimal pair. And minimal pairs, it's a great way to practice your pronunciation, especially difficult sounds or even confusing sounds, or some sounds are very similar. So that is another reason why you could practice minimal pairs. So let's look at this one where we have adapt and adopt. So the difference is that, like that ah sound, like, um, hack or that that ah adapt adapt and adopt adopt that ah sound so when i think about like that ah let's start with that ah sound both of these sounds are formed with your tongue your tongue is kind of at the bottom the ah think about going to the doctor the doctor will want to look at your throat and they say hey can you you open your mouth and say ah ah that is the sound that adopt adopt Ah is similar, but I think of, look at my mouth when I make this. So I'm gonna make the ah sound first. Ah, 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 ah. You should see my jaw drops a little and it's almost like I'm smiling a little more. So the position of my mouth changes. Adapt, adopt, adapt, adopt. So if you want, to learn more about minimal pairs because that is something I recommend. You can check out English Club. I'll just put a link right here. Um, boom, a link right there in the chat. The, this is a good site that I think you can check out here. I'll show you a picture of it. Um, and they list a bunch of minimal pairs. So here you can see different vowel sounds, minimal pairs, uh, different consonants. And it's good for your listening comprehension, but also you can repeat after you hear the sound, and that's gonna be good for your speaking and your overall pronunciation. So that's a good resource that I would suggest that you guys check out. The next question that we had from one of our members is this: these three words right here. Now, the pronunciation is very different. We have so, sewage, and sewer. All right, so I'm gonna separate these because the meaning is different. So is different than sewage and sewer. 
So let's look at this one on, um, on its own. The pronunciation, I know it sounds a little crazy, is so. It's a verb and it's talking about like the action, like you, you use a needle and you might sew uh, clothes and you are sewing. The, pronun the spelling is S-E-W, even though the pronunciation sounds like S-O, sew, to sew clothes. Um, I tried to look up the history of this because it is really strange. The, the spelling does not match the pronunciation, but I could not find any information really about saying why this is. Why is the pronunciation so different from the spelling? But just know that the pronunciation is so, and we're talking about that action, like you're sewing some clothes. Um, the next words that uh, I had on that list were sewage and sewer. So in this case, the S-E is more like that ooh sound, sue, like you're saying the name like uh, Susan or Susie, sewage. So it's gonna have like that ooh, like that U sound. You see my lips are rounded, Sue, sewage or sewer. And sewage is really talking about like waste and trash and <laughs> kind of under, below, if you, if you live in a city, below the ground, um, you have like that, maybe some of that waste flowing through the ground. That is the sewage and the place is the sewer. So sewage is actually talking about the waste. The sewer is talking about the place. So these words are related a little bit um, in their meaning. So sewage and sewer. The S-E is going to have that ooh, ooh, ooh sound. Sewage and sewer. And this one, so, <laughs> all right? And the more I think you, the more you listen, I think you'll see this, especially where pronunciation and spelling don't match up. This is another reason why I would encourage you to watch TV shows or movies using subtitles. Not only is it good for your comprehension, but that's also going to allow you um, opportunities to see where spelling and pronunciation are a little bit different. So this, that's a good reason to use subtitles because we have so, sewage, and sewer. Another question, uh, I believe from Silvio, came from Silvio, oh, hey, what's up Silvio, was regard. And was asking about the, more so like comprehension about how to comprehend this word and how it's used. So one thing I'll say about the pronunciation, it ends with that D sound. Most of the time, uh, well, when you think of the D sound, that d, 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 it's an aspirated sound, which means that there's like that puff of air that you have. So if you put, if I say the D sound, d, 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 you're going to feel like a puff of air. But sometimes with certain words like regard, it, it's really, you're stopping that aspiration. That air is not flowing out. And what I say, it kind of sounds like a, like a soft D sound because it's not really, you're, you're, you're not going to feel that aspiration when I say regard, regard. You kind of hear that D sound. So I think keep that in mind when you're thinking about comprehension and listening to it. And the other way that you could improve your comprehension when you want to, when you hear the pronunciation of this word is to understand the different ways in which the word is used. For example, regard could be a verb. To regard something like, I regard, um, I regard YouTube as a great place to learn languages and to learn a lot of different things. In that context, I regard, it means that I, I consider this or I think about this. Like, I consider YouTube a great place for learning. I regard YouTube as a great place for learning. So that's one usage. You could also, <laughs> you could also hold someone in high regard. This would be more of a noun, and you're talking about um, that you think of, that you think well of this person. That you you could hold someone in high regard. That you, um, or you could say in that same meaning that this person has no regard for something else, which again, you're talking about respect. 
So you have a lot of respect for someone, you hold them in high regard, or you have, or you don't respect something that you could say this person has no regard for something else. So these are some common ways in which this word is used, which is all going to help your comprehension. The other way that I would say that you might say um, in regard to something or in regard with something, you're talking about a connection. So perhaps um, I apply for a job and I, I don't hear anything and I write to them and I'm saying like, I'm writing an email, I'm writing to you in regard to my application, all right, in regard to something. So there are many different ways that you can um, use a word like this one. And when you understand that, it's going to help with your comprehension when you hear the word, and then it's going to help your, with your pronunciation when you speak using this word. I wanna show you another great uh, resource. So I told you about um, uh, minimal pairs with English club, when it comes to uh, like learning the meaning of new words, my favorite source, uh, I like Cambridge. This is the one that I like using. So you, he you hear, I looked up the word regard and it gives you the different meanings, some example sentences. And then I also think that these online dictionaries are useful because they, they have the pronunciation right here as well. If you want to listen to the way that a word sounds, I'm clicking on the link. Maybe you're not able to hear that, but when it comes to pronunciation, if you uh, are on your own and you don't know how a word is pronounced, use an online dictionary. I think most of them nowadays have this feature where you can hit the speaker button and it will pronounce the word for you and then you're able to listen to it. So take advantage of these resources. Uh, I think it's, it'll be very useful for you. And well, I don't, you probably maybe know some online dictionaries. I, I prefer Cambridge, but again, you'll find this uh, feature on all of them. So those were some questions from our members. Now, let me take some questions from uh, all of you guys, how to say some words. Um, I have, let's see, Mustafa said flowers. All right, so here I'm gonna type the word. Um, I'll just throw it in there so you guys can see the word that I'm talking about, flowers. The one thing, I don't know if the question was that S sound, and this is one of those um, times where it's going to end. It sounds like a Z, flowers. And the reason for that is because that R at the end, er, it's a voice sound. And when you have a voice sound followed by an S, it's going to have that Z sound, flowers, flowers. Uh, Lolly's asking about <laughs> effect and effect. These are homonyms. They're really the, the pronunciation is the same. I'll, let me, I'll make a distinction in just a moment. So effect with an A, this is going to be, these are the words that I'm talking about in case you don't know. Effect with an A uh, to affect something is a verb. Uh, effect with an E is a noun. Most of the time, like in, for me, I would say both of them with that schwa sound, uh, 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 at the beginning. To affect something or something has an effect. Sometimes people may pronounce that noun, that one the, with an E, they may say effect. So that one, you could have uh, a couple of different pronunciations, which in that case would be different. So effect versus effect. But in, for me, when I'm saying these words, I will treat them as homonyms um, uh, and I will say both of them the same way with that schwa sound in um, that, that beginning position, that uh, uh sound, effect and effect. Uh, all right, um, Angela is asking, that's a good question, this one. Um, I'll say this one. So <laughs> I talked about flowers like with a Z, like beautiful, like roses, daffodils, those are flowers. This one is a flower uh, for cooking. And flower for cooking, again, that is another homonym. Those words sound the same. So we have flowers and our flower and flower. Those again are homonyms. The pronunciation is the same, flower. Uh, let's see, we have uh, Silvio asked about thaw. All right, this is the word that I'm talking about. It has one syllable. You're not really, um, 
You're not really gonna hear that W sound that much. Uh, thaw, aw, aw. Uh, I, there are similar words that you that have a similar pronunciation and the spelling's the same with that W at the end, like law, thaw. Um, but it's not going to be like a woo, woo, a strong W sound. It's more that ah, ah, ah. That is the, <laughs> that pronunciation is how you would end that thaw, law, saw. Um, those all have that ah ending sound. Let's see. Um, Fahad, thanks for your help. You're welcome. <laughs> thanks for being here. Let's see. I'm going to get to, well, let's see. Mustafa asks, and then I'll do the next one. Uh, this word is pronounced pessimism, 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 four syllables, pessimism. Then we have uh, Saad asks for these two. I, wouldn't, I don't know about that first spelling. Um, here are a couple words, career, career. You have that long E sound in that second syllable. The R can be a little tricky because you have double R's there. Career, career, and career, career. So think about it. career has two syllables, career, career, career. You have three syllables. So that's really the distinction between those two words. Career, career. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Angela's asking, uh, good, good Halloween words, because we're talking about which. Um, which and which, those are homonyms. The pronunciation is going to be the same. Last week, I talked about uh, a Halloween lesson and one of the, the tongue twisters that involved both of these words. Uh, what was the tongue twister? If two witches were watching two watches, which witch would watch which watch? And again, that is a tongue twister because you are, well, you're just practicing saying the, those homonyms. Which, 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 which. It's the same pronunciation. Let's see, we have, okay, here's another one. I'm gonna go, uh, Alexandra is talking about ear and year. So they, they can sound a little similar. I think when you're listening, trying to make the distinction can be a little challenging. The only difference is that Y sound at the beginning of year. Ear, year. So again, when you're making that Y sound, yeah, 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 you're gonna drop your jaw. It kind of looks like you're, you're smiling a little bit. And I think if I say the words, you should be able to see that. Ear, year. Ear, year. So let's see, <laughs> what else do we have? Uh, Meat is asking about, this is a good one, because I like, uh, again, uh, did you? And I think, again, pronunciation, part of that deals with connected speech. Did you is often connected, it's reduced, and it might sound like did you, did you, did you, did you. Um, so instead of saying like, what did you do yesterday? I, I might just casually, informally, very quickly say, what'd you do yesterday? <laughs> Did you? What'd you do yesterday? And this is when I think listening can be a real challenge. When you have a lot of words and phrases that are connected, they're run together, and you, the more you listen, the more you'll get comfortable with that. Again, a great way to practice would be using subtitles because you would hear that and you're actually seeing the words. So you know exactly what the person is saying when you use subtitles. Uh, that is another, another example as to why it can be useful for your pronunciation. Let's see. <laughs> I'm gonna go, okay. Roja uh, is asking about these two words and then I'll get to yours, Lolly. Um, we're talking about endure, endure is the first word that you are E, endure, and the next word, endeavor. So again, there's difference in syllables. Endure has two syllables, endeavor has three syllables, endeavor. So that is the, the real difference. You should be able to hear those different syllables, endure, endeavor. 
Then we have, uh, let's see, I told you I get to use lolly these right here. Let's talk about these. So, <laughs> moon, soon. You can hear the difference that, uh, again, those are minimal pairs. The difference would be that one sound, the M and the S. Moon, soon. And look, book. So I don't know if they, maybe you're asking about the that double O, that pronunciation, that di, that difference between because again the spelling and the pronunciation. Moon soon, that that double O has that ooh ooh sound. Moon moon soon, but then look book, look book. There is a, a poem in English called uh, Chaos. And this, the, the purpose of the poem was that the author was trying to show that spelling and pronunciation did not always go together. So they came up with this poem, uh, it's called Chaos. I did a lesson uh, on this poem a while back trying to show that really English spelling and pronunciation, it's, it's a little crazy. If you have not seen the lesson, here is a link to it. I'll put it in the chat. It's a long poem. And what I did is I, I didn't practice it, but I read the poem. And then I was highlighting where I made pronunciation mistakes. And I made a lot of them. So if you're curious um, in checking that out, I didn't write the, the name of the poem. Let me write the poem uh, is called The Chaos. And here, there's the link again. I put it in the chat again. So check that out. It's a long, uh, it's a long poem, and you get to see how uh, how much how many mistakes I make. Because from time to time, I think it's very common, even in your native language, you're going to make pronunciation mistakes. You're going to misspeak. It happens. Let's see. Um, Fabio ask this word. Uh, I'm gonna try to get it as many as I can. So um, keep asking. Major and mayor. Again, this is a good example of a minimal pair, that J, Y, major, mayor. And the J, Y, the pronunciation is a little similar. Um, the J really, J, J, J. Your real, J. Your tongue is gonna hit the behind your back front teeth on the top part, J, Y. The Y, your, your tongue is not going to hit, the sides of your tongue should be uh, between your teeth. So again, I think when you're talking about these minimal pairs with these individual sounds, you can uh, look up online. There are so many different images and telling you, okay, this is how you need to position your mouth. This is where your tongue needs to be. This is how the air is going to flow through. And then you could just practice. Major, mayor. And I hope if you, if you guys want practice at home right now, when you hear me say these words, you can always repeat, listen and repeat. Um, Risha asking about this word, uh, entrepreneurial, all right? So entrepreneur is a person who starts a business. It's a word that English has taken from French and you're this we're using it in this case as an adjective someone is entrepreneurial entrepreneurial like um they like to start businesses that's their personality they're entrepreneurial then we have umar this is a good word um veterinarian all right and i think one way to kind of understand this word is to break it down into syllables veterinarian all right six syllables veterinarian all right veterinarian veterinarian that t sound because i'm from the united states that t sound is going to have a, it's a, it's called a flap t and it really sounds like a d veterinarian so you're not really if when i say that you're probably not hearing that t sound you're hearing more of a d sound that's a flat T sound, veterinarian. The same way if I say water, it's going to sound like a D, that flat T, W-A-T-E-R, but I would say people from the U.S., water. Um, 
Sleepwalker, good word. <laughs> this was in, I think, uh, a lesson that I did recently. Flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. Keep in mind that the ED at the end, it's going to be another syllable, that id, because the word ends with a consonant T sound. Flabbergast, flabbergasted. So you have that extra syllable at the end. Keep that in mind. Um, then we have Jana is asking about this word right here. Government, government. And you really, I would say that that e that n for the most part is omitted. You, you you might hear it slightly government, but I think for the most part it's omitted government, government. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get to a couple others. Uh, someone because I wanted to do this one. This is another one that I think people have difficulty with. Um, Antarctica, Antarctica, Antarctica. So you do hear that C, it has that, you do hear that um, Antarctica. You do hear that first C a little bit, Antarctica, Antarctica. You guys can repeat this stuff after me. Uh, let's see, we have uh, Mustafa is talking about uh, this word, supremacist supremacist. I don't think the the spelling is correct. I know what you're trying to say. Supremacist. Let's see. Meet somebody is okay, and then I'll get to the next one. Here we go. Culture. Culture. So that U R E really it sounds like that your sound. Culture. Culture. Uh, uh, that's another I think common commonly confused word. Saj is asking about almond almond so that o-n-d is kind of like an und almond 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 two syllables almond uh i feel like saying it a lot sleepwalker i don't know this we kind of talked about um that ah uh, sound that's another one draw 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 saw um law uh silvio asked about thaw so there's many that a w that aw aw aw. That's a that's a good one. Um, I'll ask. I'll do this one. I guess that maybe the uh, es one seven ch two four interactive interactive uh, the channel interactive English interactive. In case you don't know what it means, it's kind of like they're. Uh, you're, you're doing something kind of, you're engaged, you're participating. So that's why I named the channel Interactive English because I try to do these lessons where it's not just passive learning and you're watching a video. A lot of times we'll, I'll ask you to do something and participate, answer the questions, especially with these live lessons. Like right now, you guys are pr participating, you're writing words. I hope that perhaps after I say it, you are repeating the words and practicing your pronunciation. Uh, that's what I hope. Let's see. Um, Aileen asked about this. This is another homonym. Both of these words have the same pronunciation. Complement. But they do have different meanings. Complement with an E, M-E-N-T, means that you are, that these two things go well together. Peanut butter complements jelly when making a, a sandwich, a PB&J. Complement with an I, you are, you are telling somebody something positive. You're saying something nice and you give someone a compliment. Rolson asks about these. Again, this, these are homonyms. Uh, your, your, same pronunciation. Sounds the same, different meaning because Y-O-U apostrophe R-E is the contraction for you are. Um, let's see. Uh, Roja, I said I get to this one. Uh, you were asking about laboratory, laboratory, laboratory. So I would say it... Um, Laboratory, that second syllable more with the schwa sound and uh sound. Laboratory, laboratory. The stress is going to be on that first syllable. Laboratory. 
this is a good word, Angela. Paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Para, fa, that schwa sound again, that is the most common sound in English, that unstressed vowel sound. Paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Uh, good word, I think more advanced word uh, if you're talking about different items that somebody might have. Often I think this word is associated with drugs, like paraphernalia. Let's see. Um, this one, all right, you can just so you can hear me say it. Ticket, ticket, ticket. If that's what you were asking about, Emmanuel. Um, trousers, 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 trousers. So again, remember I said that R, that final consonant sound, it's voiced, so that S is going to sound like a Z if that was the question. Trousers. Mustafa, oops, entourage. Entourage, again, this is another French word that English has just borrowed and taken, but the, the pronunciation um, I think is going to remain slightly the same. I don't, I don't speak French, so I'm, I'm just guessing. Entourage. Lali is asking, uh, I, this is a good one. This is psychic. Psychic. It's a silent P at the beginning of the word. Uh, psychic. So uh, this one, let's just do, I just gonna do one more cause I gotta wrap things up. Um, reservoir, reservoir. That S is gonna have more of a Z sound, reservoir. Again, this is a word that was borrowed uh, from, by French, from French, um, that O-I-R sound, reservoir. So that is the pronunciation for that word. Again, I hope you, I'd encourage you, listen, repeat, practice your pronunciation. If you guys like what we do, I'll do more of these lessons later on and I'll do the same thing. I'll probably reach out to our members first. If you want to uh, sponsor, support us, check that out. Links are in the description down below. And if you enjoyed the lesson, let me know. Hit the like button, which tells me that the lesson's useful, it's helpful for you to be able to ask your questions, anything that you want to know about pronunciation, if it helps to hear me say it and then you can practice or give you some information. Like I said, I told you about um, that site for minimal pairs, which I think is very useful. Um, this is Cambridge Online Dictionary, but right here, English Club, you can check that out and find some more information about minimal pairs. It's another great way to practice and improve your pronunciation. So I hope you guys can check that out. I hope you find it useful. So thank you so much for joining me on this Halloween, this kind of Halloween pronunciation day. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Give some shout outs. Thank you uh, for joining me. Muadin, Meet, Aline, uh, Risha, Christine, Angela, Hope you have a, a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Kareel, onion, <laughs> onion, uh, haseo, on, I like that. Onion haseo, I like that. Changed it to onion, a little bit of a play on words. I like it. Um, Roja, sleepwalker, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And Nekla, thank you. All right, I gotta go. I will see you guys next time. So long.